understanding the fine print. Not understanding the fine print, Jose. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests, have you ever entered into an agreement and you just didn't understand the fine print? There's someone seated across from you. They're offering you the opportunity of a lifetime. All you hear is blah, 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 blah. And rather than say, I think I got it, I think I understand it, but just in case I don't, can you repeat the whole thing over? I wasn't paying attention. We kind of just smile and wave, don't we? And as soon as they get up, we're thinking, oh my god, what did they say? What did I say yes to? If you were with me and my wife, Rachel, August 6th, the year 2000, you would have seen us attempting to understand the fine print of our wedding vows. <laughs> the reason why I say attempting is because we were married by a priest who was way up in years, who may have had way too much to drink during the communion services that day. He gave us the speed reader version of the wedding vows, and it went something like this. Da 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 Repeat. And Rachel and I are Da -da -da, da -da -da, da -da -da. Then he got to the vowel part and got a little more spirited. Da -da -da, da -da -da, da -da -da. Repeat. Da -da -da, da -da -da. And for the first few years of our marriage, we didn't know if we were really married because we didn't understand a word that he said. <laughs> Secondly, we didn't understand what we said yes to. Not understanding the fine print. What is a vow? A vow means to love someone with all your heart all your soul, all your passion. Now that could be a difficult thing to do, right? That could be a painful thing to do. I don't think it's a coincidence that vow rhymes with ow <laughs> or ouch in not doing our marriage duties correctly, gentlemen, and taking out the trash, right? <laughs> not understanding the fine print was to love my wife for better or for worse. I didn't know it was going to entail something as simple as going shopping. See, when I go shopping, I know what item I'm going to get, I know what store I'm going to, I know where the item is in the store. I get to the front, pay, and have a great day. <laughs> but when I go shopping with my wife, to the mall, as soon as those doors open, all I hear is doo -doo 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 -doo. I hear a voice over the PA, you've now entered the realm where time stands still for a break. <laughs> wander with no point or purpose in these stores. And heaven forbid if it's time for my wife to get a whole new wardrobe ensemble, because I know we're headed to the dreaded video room area. In my mind, all I hear is ee, 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 ee. And I know I have to endure Rachel's best impersonation of Project Runway. And she's going to model each and every one of those clothes for Fierce, the attitude. And then she doesn't even purchase most of them. But we go to the fitting room area anyway. That's where you see the married men seated on the couch, some on the floors, on their phones, some cast out. <laughs> if they shop till they drop and get self-medication, it's hard to tell at that point. But I'll begin to ask the gentleman around me, how long are you in for? <laughs> because when you go shopping with your spouse to the mall, it's almost like a prison sentence. And you're trying to be a good little boy to get out on good behavior. So you can go to that one manly store that we can go to, right guys? Whether it's Brookstone, the cigar shop, the bar in Dave & Buster's. And I don't even drink, but it almost drives me to. I asked the first gentleman, sir, how long have you been here? Two hours, two hours, good lord. I asked another gentleman, sir, how long have you been here? <laughs> four hours, four hours, good lord. I see an elderly gentleman in the corner, sir, how long have you been here? Since it opened. <laughs> sir, you've been here since the morning? No, since it opened in 1940. <laughs> Loving your spouse for better or for worse entails going to the dreaded fitting room. The second vow that I didn't understand the fine print was to love, cherish, and protect my wife. The key word being protect. Boy, did I shatter this vow. A few years ago, we went to a friend's house to have a Bible study. Their teenage son comes down, we're there no more a few minutes, and runs down and says, Hey guys, do you want to see my new big blue tarantula? Want to see it? Want to see it? Want to see it? Want to see it? And before we can say anything, he's up to his room and produces a fish tank with a big blue tarantula inside. Sets it down on the coffee table and takes the lid off. It takes a golf pencil, a golf pencil, not a 10-foot pole, not a flamethrower, but a golf pencil, and begins to point the features out of this big blue spider. Well, in doing so, he must have spooked the spider because it went from a statue like this to up and over and outside the tank. 
Now, my friend who was there with me, we did not say a word. This is what you would have heard. Hey, we were running to get help, guys. We've seen arachnophobia. We couldn't have no big blue spider have baby blue spiders. And Rachel, she could have handled that spider, not a problem. But if it was a cockroach, she would have been like this. See, I didn't do that. I just ran outside. Not understanding the fine print. Apparently, protecting your spouse means from killer spiders. I did not know that. I didn't know that. How was I ever going to make it up to the love of my life? Well, a few years later, we went to Denver, and we go to the butterfly pavilion. And lo and behold, there's an opportunity to hold a tarantula. And it must have been on Rachel's bucket list because she sprints towards the line. And as people were going to and from the line, I noticed that you can get a sticker that says, I held Rosie the tarantula. The entire time I'm thinking, how can I get that sticker? I know I can trip this little kid to take the sticker. No, that's not going to work. Rachel knows I'm scared of spiders. I'll ask her. Beautiful one. The love of my life. I will cherish and protect you. Can you give me the sticker? Because the guys will never believe that I held a spider. She's an old handsome husband who's sexier than Brad Pitt. If you want your own sticker, you have to hold the spider yourself. And then maybe next time we won't run out on you. She's right. Now there's a huge crowd to see the guy who's scared to hold a spider. But I'm not scared to hold Rosie. I'm gonna hold Rosie, I'm gonna hold her right now. I'm not scared, I'm not scared at all. I'm not scared. Okay, come on. A four-year-old little girl just held her, come on. Okay. I can hold Rosie, I can hold Rosie. Ah, the leg touched me, it touched me. Oh my God, the leg touched me. <laughs> but just so you know, I didn't run around like a little girl the entire time. I brought photo evidence that I held Rosie the tarantula. <laughs> Now this shows what guilt and shame will do as a motivator, what peer pressure will do, and the lengths you'll go to make it up to the love of your life. Rachel and I have been married the last 15 years. We've been through the good, the bad, and the ugly of our marriage. How were we able to get through? Maybe we didn't understand the, what the drug priest was saying. Maybe we didn't understand the fine print. But when we argue at times, and we do, I always get the last word. Yes, Rachel. Yes, Rachel. <laughs>